I'm going to show you how to prepare a file in Cura for printing on the Ultimaker 2. Right, I'm just going to grab a grab an STL file and then drag and drop it on into Cura. And there we go, it's a little house. Okay. Now, you can just print it as it is now. And you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner it's going to be 41 minutes and we're going to use about half a meter of filament. And if I want to make it slightly higher quality, we can go drag it across, drag the little bar across there to increase the quality, wait for it to load, and then you'll see the time's gone up to about an hour and 12 minutes. Still a similar amount of uh, material. And then I can make it a little bit faster as well, and drag it over here. And you'll see that it's only gonna take 28 minutes. So you can just leave it like that and then just go save to the SD card and it will be ready to print. Or you can switch, well you can either enable supports, but as you can see from this print, it's not really necessary. There's nothing that's too much trouble for the Ultimaker, so we don't need, we can leave that unticked. But we can go here and select Advanced. From here we can play with every single setting. So here you've got the layer height, which at the moment is about in the middle. Um, you can go down to 0.02 of a millimeter is the maximum, and then 0.25 is the uh, kind of largest layer, so that'll be your fastest print. Then you have the shell thickness, which is how thick it is around the outside of the object um, before the, it uses the infill in the center. Then we've got retraction, that's when the filament is brought back into the machine, when it stops extruding. Um, now we've got speed here, 50 millimeters per second is about standard, so I wouldn't really I wouldn't really change that too much. You can increase it a little bit, but you may end up um, with a bit of under extrusion if you go too fast. Infill here, 20% is about standard, um, but you can go you can go more. You could make it solid, so if you put in 100%, that would be solid, or you can reduce it a bit too. And then we've got the cooling fans, and then again enable supports gives you a few different options if you were to do that, including touching build plate or just put supports everywhere. Um, but we're not going to use that, so I'll untick that. And then platform adhesion. This is where to ensure that it sticks to the bed. A brim is just one layer thick around the outside. Um, and a raft is basically prints a whole area that it then prints the print on top of, if that makes sense. Um, but again, this isn't really necessary on this print. Um, so this looks ready to go. Um, if I just click on this view mode here, we can click on layers, and then we can slide it up once it's rendered it fully. We can slide it up and down and check that everything is printing okay. Um, so let's slide that up. Everything, I'll zoom in a little bit. Everything looks fine. That's absolutely fine. You'll notice if anything is less than 0.4 in um, like a wall thickness, less than 0.4, it will just ignore it um, because the nozzle is 0.4. So this post here is just, just um, large enough to print. So that will all work fine. That looks, that looks okay. So we can go click on save to disk and then just select the SD card which I haven't got plugged in at the moment and then save it as um, whatever it is take the SD card out stick it in the machine and then you're ready to print thanks for watching if you like the video then please click to subscribe for more information on the printers and materials we've used in this video visit dream3d.co.uk